when you get um, common sense and sophisticated science and practical experience in the same place, um, you are really in a powerful position to do something about that. And that's, that's exactly what's happening. So literally, um, at a molecular level, we now understand how much responsive interactions in a safe and stable and predictable environment shape the developing circuitry of the baby's brain. Here we are in 2016, and we have all this research available to us, and we've got programs that we know work, but haven't been scaled. We also have an increasing number of philanthropists and elected officials who understand that early childhood education is as important, perhaps even more important, than kindergarten through 12th grade education. So we're at this moment where that understanding is cresting. What the early childhood field needs right now is thought partners from the kind of the enlightened, kind of more far-seen part of the investment community. And particularly from those who understand uh, the concept of, of, of the basic principles of, of venture capital and other kinds of, of investments where um, you're betting on things that are going to really make a huge difference. What we need from the investor community and the philanthropic community is thought partnership in addition to, to financial investment. We need to be able to incorporate the thinking that produces breakthrough outcomes in other fields because breakthrough outcomes are not a common part of the education field, the early childhood field. Well, so Taking risks and trying new things I think is something that philanthropists in particular can be hugely helpful. You could teach us a lot about that and give us the space to, to learn by doing. That would be amazing. That would, that would be a game changer. Philanthropy has a critical role in helping shape a statewide and a local agenda about early childhood learning. First, we can do research. We can commission research and then we can publish research. Then we can convene different people in the community, government leaders, nonprofit leaders, religious leaders, parents, to understand that data and mobilize around that. And then community foundations can play a special role in that we're able to lobby state government and local government around specific policies and regulations that can advance early learning. Philanthropy often not only has dollars to bring to the table for advocacy, but also the voices of the philanthropists themselves. The ability to talk to legislators, to be champions on behalf of those at-risk kids, hugely important. If we can raise the voice of early childhood advocates and make sure that philanthropists and elected officials who have the resources to bring to the arena uh, are aware of how important this is and what a big difference it would make, I think you'd see a massive influx of dollars into early childhood. We know what kids need in the future, and unless we start making those investments today, they won't be prepared for the world that we know they will need to navigate tomorrow. What a great time to be in this field. What a great time for breakthroughs in our thinking to basically move the needle much further for the, especially the children who are most disadvantaged. We have the chance to make truly game-changing legislation and impact on very young children. This is the moment because we clearly are in an economic box in the United States where we need to think about how do we become a more productive society? 
How do we make sure that more people are able to get jobs? How do we reduce the incarceration rate in the United States? All of those things can be addressed in early childhood.